everybody, welcome back to the next part in my dialing in series for our Line 6 Helix. Bit of a bonus one this week, <clears throat> as you can hear from my voice. I've been struggling with a bit of a cold this week, so as one does when they're not feeling well, is <clears throat> you try to recreate or get as close as you can to recreating a uh, Robert John Mutt Lang production. <laughs> Actually, here's a <clears throat> video I've been hoping to do for a while, and I, and I came across a really cool backing track of <clears throat> Def Leppard's photograph. Um, anybody who is back uh, roughly my age, I guess, will remember when these albums came out and they were just mind-blowing productions. Uh, <clears throat> Mutt Lang, everything he touched would, would basically literally turn to, to gold records, right? Or platinum records. Amazing production. Always been a really <clears throat> amazing guitar tone um, that Def Leppard had the layers of guitar smooth, but just with enough crunch and, you know, very processed, lots of effects, but it just sat in the mix and you know, those mixes were so huge sounding. So I chose the song Photograph from the Def Leppard album Pyromania to kind of get in the ballpark of. I, I, I wasn't holding up too much hope of getting it exactly as these tones are pretty, pretty interesting. But I, I, I didn't even look into what they possibly even used on the album. I just kind of went my own direction using my ears and um, picked the equipment that I wanted to kind of go with. So go listen to the performance video. <clears throat> I do have it up. Uh, all the guitars on there you're hearing are this preset. Uh, there's four snapshots on this, uh, subtle differences between three of them, but I'll explain that in a few minutes. <clears throat> um, but all you're hearing on that is just these guitars. There's none of the original guitars on it. And I tried to get the mix somewhat sort of close. You know, these are difficult things to do. I threw this together really quick too. It came together really fast this morning. Shot the whole performance video and edited it in basically an hour, uh, <clears throat> which was kind of, I thought it was going to take a lot longer, but it all came together pretty easily. Um, so yeah, lots of fun. Um, go take a listen to that to hear how it is. And this is also on custom tone now for you guys to grab and use on your own. So let's go over to HX Edit and <clears throat> take a look. Funny thing is, I'm using my uh, Pacifica, Yamaha Pacifica 612. <clears throat> in the video, you'll notice I'm using my 611 for most of it. And then for the leads, I switched to the 612 for no other reason than I snapped the string. I've been breaking strings like crazy. I've probably broke more strings in the last week than I have uh, in the last five years. Really funny. I don't know what's going on. But anyways, that's, that, that's what happened. So I, I switched over. Uh, same bridge pickup, you know, so there's not going to be a huge difference in tone between the two guitars. So here we are <clears throat> on the uh, presets. Uh, starting at the end, you know, LA Studio Comp, like normal, 5.5 peak, peak reduction, can't talk, uh, <clears throat> gain is at 5. A um, few little tricks on the EQ here, low cut at 40 hertz, high cut at 10 kilohertz, um, 320 hertz with a Q of 3.4, just pulled back 2 dB, and a high frequency of 1.8 kilohertz, a high Q of 2.1, uh, a Q of 2.1, sorry, and high gain boosted 2 dB. So that just stays like that on all the snapshots. Same reverb on all the snapshots. A room verb with a decay of 7, pre-delay of 15 milliseconds, and a mix of 30%. Uh, the delay is going to come on and off. I'll talk about that per preset in a minute. <clears throat> Low and high shelf, again, on all the preset or all, all the snapshots, sorry. Uh, I took the low frequency of 750 hertz, and I dropped everything below that by 2.5 dB. And I took all the frequencies above 2 kilohertz and I boosted those 4 dB. So that's what's happening as sort of the global processing over all the snapshots. I also have a chorus pedal, uh, the, uh, just the chorus model, um, set to, the, the tempo of the song is around 126 beats per minute. I have it set to a half note with a depth of 7, pre-delay of 3.2, and the wave shape is saw up, okay? Uh, tone at 5 and mix at 50%. That is on all the snapshots as well. From what I can tell listening to this, all the guitar tones are pretty chorused, okay? So that brings us to the amps. You'll notice I have two amps and cams in this uh, preset um, because I have four snapshots. I have overdrive rhythm, overdrive rhythm with delay. So those are gonna be identical except for <clears throat> a little touch of delay on this one. I have a lead, which is gonna be uh, this amp. And then I have a clean sound, which is a completely different amp. So the rhythms, uh, and overdrive sounds are the placator dirty going into a 412 greenback 25 speaker with a 160 ribbon mic on it. Okay. Um, it's the distance is pulled back six and a half inches and that's all the settings I have on the actual uh, cab. The placator dirty settings though, drive of 5.8, uh, bass at 4.3, mid at 9.5, treble at 10, presence at 10, channel volume at 8.2, 
Master at 5.2, <clears throat> SAG at 5, HPE fat off, and the C45 on saturation off, and the Ripple Bias and Bias X I didn't touch. Now how that changes from snapshot to snapshot is, on the overdrive rhythm, nothing changes. The delay just shuts off, as you can see. So we'll talk about the delay in a second, but on the lead, you'll see that I boost the channel volume to give it a little bit more volume in the mix, and I also push the drive up to seven. That's really the only thing that changed, okay, with, with that. So let's go back to the overdrive rhythm with the delay. What I did here on the delay is I used a simple delay set at a quarter note, <clears throat> feedback of 4% and a pretty low mix of 16%, just to give it a little bit of something uh, ambience, uh, as I heard in the original recording. So let's do this. Let's shut off the delay, <clears throat> reverb, EQ, keep the compressor on at the end. You'll see a compressor here at the beginning too, that's just used on the clean, and I'll, I'll shut off the chorus. So this is just the amp dialed in, in, in this manner with none of the other processing. Okay, let's add the last EQ in. Very subtle difference here. Bring the verb in. Again, kind of subtle, give it a little bit of ambience. Now, I'll bring this EQ in first. Kind of thins it out a bit, gets it closer. Um, bring the delay in. You can hear it's very subtle, that's all I wanted. And finally, the chorus. And this is kind of brings it all together. So that's what I had for that. Now, the other parts in it where I go to the overdrive rhythm without delay, everything else stays the same, but this is for the part where they have this kind of... So that part there is played on both the overdrive rhythm sound plus the clean sound. With the clean sound, maybe it's a little more prominent. There's also some keys doubling that part up and that's what kind of gives it that really cool layered sound. So those are the overdrive rhythm and overdrive rhythm lead. Now the clean sound, if you notice, <clears throat> the placator dirty shuts off, the delay shuts off, all these other settings stay the same, chorus is on. I bring a deluxe compressor in with a threshold of minus 25.5 dB, ratio of two to one, attack of five milliseconds, release of 50 milliseconds, and a mix of 75%. And that hits the front of the ja Roland Jazz Chorus 120 amp model with the drive at 1.5, bass at two, mid at 0.1, I don't know, maybe I meant to get it to zero possibly, uh, treble at 7.9, presence at 6.9, channel volume and master both on 10 and the bright off, okay? Uh, into the same chorus. Now this was to double, the only time you hear this in the mix is when we're doubling that chorus part up that I just played, doubled with the um, overdrive sound. It's not really a tone that was meant to sit on its own, really, uh, more just to be blended in to give it that cut and that little kind of 
that note kind of ringing out through the mix a little bit and blending with the um, the keyboard. So that's basically <clears throat> that. Um, and then I had the lead snapshot. Like I said, the delay I changed too. I raised the feedback to 15% and changed the mix up to 25% just to have a little bit more actual, you know, sound of repeats in the mix and let that lead sit in the mix better. <laughs> I also raised the gain up to seven, okay? So that's basically the tone. I hope you guys like that. I hope it's something you can find useful. Um, it sits really nice in the mix. I was liking the way it sounded. Like I said, I never, you know, again, the, the standard disclaimer, I'm not saying that this is identical to uh, <clears throat> the original, but I think it got, you know, enough in the ballpark that it would be very usable if we were covering this song or even for other Def Leppard songs as well. A lot of those songs had the similar kind of guitar tones on it, so. Hope you guys enjoy that. Thank you again so much for tuning in and sticking with me. Um, <clears throat> pardon my voice again today, feeling a little under the weather, but you know, this was fun to get me through the day. Um, so this is up on Custom Tone. Go grab it. Uh, like the video if you don't mind. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Share the video with somebody you might uh, think would enjoy it. Really appreciate that support. And I will be back soon with some more content. And uh, ciao for now. Thanks again for tuning in.